the topic I've been asked to speak on. The topic only I talk on. It's not really a topic that I think I'm really qualified to talk on. Not the topic when I fit to talk on. I'm still learning. Me myself, I see they learn. But I believe that, just like our brother said, this is a topic that is really pivotal to our success as ministers of the gospel. I believe say this is a topic when go fit help us as minister of God's word. Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse eighteen. To 20. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, go reach 20. Paul was writing and he said, But as God is true, Paul on the right say, As God went there true, our word towards you was not yea and nay. Our word when would they talk to you, not, not be yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us. But Jesus Christ, when we come preach to now. Even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus. Even by me and the person that they call Silvanus and Timotheus. Was not yea and nay. Not be yes and no. But in him was yea. But inside him, oh, now yes. For all the promises of God in him are yea. All the promises when they inside him, now yes. And in him, amen. And inside him, amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Unto God's glory, oh, even by us. The second passage that I want to use as co text is Numbers 23, verse. 19. The second Bible passage when I go use now Numbers 23 verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man. God not be man no. That he should lie. When you can't lie. That's a terrible testimony concerning man. Now what kind of ugly testimony when they about man? Neither the son of man that he should repent. When I am son of man, when you can't repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? He don't talk him, he not go do him. Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? I be he don't talk him, he not go feed do him. These two passages combined has something to say about the God that we claim we are serving as ministers. These two Bible verses put together get something to do about the God what we say we they serve as ministers of God. This God is a God of integrity. This God, now God of integrity. And as I said earlier on at the welcoming address, the success of every minister depends on his relationship with the owner of the work. As I don't talk, when we won't start, how any minister of God will come to succeed? He can't do the closeness of this minister of God and the person when sent on the work. And if the owner of the work is a man or a person of integrity, if the person won't get the work, the person won't come get good character. The one who is going to serve him successfully has to be a man or woman of integrity also. Person when be say they serve him, go see be person when go get good character and good mind. What exactly is integrity? What him be integrity? I'm sure if you check in the dictionaries, you will get all kinds of definitions. I know say so when you check dictionary, you can't get plenty, plenty thing when be say integrity mean. If you ask philosophers, they will give you all kinds of definitions. When you ask people, where no book, where well, those people, they will give you many, many meanings. In fact, if you ask theologians, they will give you all kinds of definitions that by the time they finish, you won't even know what they are talking about anymore. When you go ask people, when they study the Bible, they go give you another plenty meaning. By the time they finish, you yourself, you will get confused. But as far as I can understand by the word integrity, it simply means Matthew 5, 37. What I can understand about integrity, it means, say, Matthew 5, 37. Matthew 5, 37. For Matthew 
5:37. Where Jesus Christ said, "Let your yes be yes." When Jesus Christ can't tell us, say, "Make our yes be yes," so and your no, no. And when we say no, make our no be no. He said, "Anything that is more than this is of the evil one." He said, "Anything we can pass this one, now bad, now devil won't be that." So when we're talking about integrity, we are saying that you mean what you say, and you say what you mean. You know what you they talk, and you they talk what you know. I think that one is easy for even a child to understand. I can't believe say even small picking no we understand that one. It is by implication of this definition of integrity, therefore, that we mean that a man of integrity will not lie. With this one, oh, we can't know, say, person when get integrity, he not go feel lie. A man of integrity, of integrity will not give false records. Person when get integrity, he not go feel they give lie, lie, oh, for his record. And false reports. You're not going to give lie, lie, reports. You cannot be a man of integrity and, and say that uh, 50 people were in attendance in your church when only five were present. You're not going to be a man of integrity when you come to say 50 people come to your church when you're busy and only five now attend. And you won't say that the tithe is 105 when it was 150. And you're not going to say the tithe when you collect now 105 when the real amount now 150. A man of integrity will not exaggerate. Man when get integrity, not go to over talk, they, not go to scatter what they talk, they lie. Because exaggeration is nothing else other than lies. When you won't try to make words sweet for people here, it not, not be anything no, but that one a big lie. A man of integrity will not give promises that he knows he cannot keep. Man when get integrity, he not go call promise, say I go do this thing whereas he no say he no go feed to him. If he says he's coming you can go to bed and rest because he will come. If he does say he they come, you feel go to bed, make you go to sleep. Because so, he go come. Unless he dies before the date. Unless he can't die before that day when he promise you. And a man of integrity will not come late. Man when get integrity, he not go come late for meeting. I don't think I came late tonight. I was told I'm to be here by 7.30. That's why. <laughs> Make on an to say, me myself, I come late on this meeting. Oh. They tell me, say, at 7.30, I go come. And I came before 7.30. And me myself, <laughs> I can't come before 7.30. So, a man of integrity, you, you will see in him those characteristics. Man when come get integrity, you can't see this good, good thing inside them. No lies. Man, when do they talk lies? No falsehood of any type. No false records. No false reports. Man, when do they talk any lie, lie? No exaggerations. Man, when do they make, when do they try to make words sweet for people? No fake or false promises. That's when they promise and they fail. And no late comments. And now, person, when they come late? If we take all those ones, <laughs> you will know that integrity is something that is seriously lacking, particularly among us Pentecostal ministers. When you go and put everything together, you go and see, say, this word integrity, now what is that we lack as ministers of God inside church? I mean, I remember one occasion when a group of I mean, a particular group in our church was having a program. I remember when one particular group for our church, the old program. And I arrived at the meeting. I, I wasn't invited, but I just went. I go and go to the meeting, no. When they, they never even invite me, but I just go, so make I go see. And I arrived about two hours after they started, and they were panicking. I go not reach there. Two hours after the lost start, I could see said all of them they shake, they, they fear. I said, What was the problem? They said the invited guest speaker hasn't come. I could say, Why are they shake? They said, Person, when we invite, make it come preach. Say, No, I come. I said, Who is he? They mentioned the name. I could say, Who be that person? No, they can't call the name. Oh, 
Oh, it's only two hours late. Not only two hours, it's all late now. He's coming. I can't tell them, say, he did come. No, 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 no. If, if he's a fellow, he's coming. Only don't expect him until at least two and a half hours. I can't tell them, say, if not that person, though, he did come. I said, Beto, more than I expect him now. But after two and a half hours, that like two hours, 30 minutes, he go come. From the time, and, and exactly uh, two hours, 45 minutes after he was supposed to arrive, he came. After two hours, 45 minutes, when he's supposed to not come, then that time he can't come. And I know, I mean, I know another fellow who, if he tells you, just wait for me, I will be there. I can't say no another person. When go tell you, say, ah, make you just wait for me. And they come. Me. Nothing is going to stop me from coming. Get another speaker. Nothing, no, go feel stop me to come. Make you just go prepare another person when go preach. Because he is not coming. Because so, if this person no, he not go come. And after, after some of them, you know. And I know some that you will tell, sir, according to our program, you are to speak for one hour. And I know some other ones, when you go tell, say, according to our program, now only one hour, now you go talk. Prepare for three hours. Make one yours prepare for three hours. Integrity is involved in all these things. Integrity, oh, they inside all these things we will not talk. Your yes must be yes. You tell your yes oh, will be yes. You understand, so I say yes, I do. When you ask the person, say you understand, he go say yes, so oh, I understand. One hour, yes, I do. After one hour, you say, Ah, you understand? He say, I understand. And then two hours later, you send him a note to say, sir. <laughs> After two hours, you can't send him a note. And he will look at your note and say, I'm just about to finish. You can't look that paper when you write, give him. You can't say, I just won't finish. And that gives you another one hour. Neko na yose prepare for extra one hour. Integrity has a basis. For those who understand it. This is what they call integrity. It gets the, the foundation for people who understand them. If you see people walking in integrity, it is because they know. If you can see person when they walk for integrity, make on a no say, he no say. That whatever they do. What did they do? Irrespective of to whom they've done it. To anybody. Whether the person big or small, the one to whom they are going to give an account is God. Who they go can't give account to, not be to anybody, but now unto God. That is the basic basis for integrity. Now that will be the real foundation of the word integrity. Because the Bible says in Romans 14 verse 12. The Bible can't talk for Romans 14 verse 12. Romans 14 verse 12. Romans 14 verse 12. Everyone shall give an account of himself to God of whatsoever you've done in this body. Say everybody who can't, who can't give account of himself to God. So whatever you do, you tell a lie. Anything when you do, if you did lie, lie. You exaggerate. If they try to paint word, make it sweet for people here. You give false reports. You can't uh, give lie lie reports. You promise and you don't fulfill it. It is to God that you are going to give an account, not to man. You can't promise, oh, and you not keep to your promise. Now, unto God, oh, you go can't give reports. Not be unto man. Oh, it may be man that suffered as a result of your action. If it be seen, a man go suffer because of what you do. But it is to God that you are going to give the account. But now unto God, oh, you can't give the reports. And David made this clear in Psalm 51, verses 1 and 4. David, oh, he can't make this thing clear well, well, for Psalm 51, verse 4. Psalm 51, for the read it all the way from verse 1 to 4. Psalm 51, you feel read them from 1, go reach 4. When he was writing Psalm 51, he was was repenting of his sin. When he come to write Psalm 51, he called they repent for the sin. 
the sin that he committed when he took Uriah's wife and killed Uriah. The sin when he commits, when he can't take Uriah's wife and he can't kill Uriah. Remember what he said? He said, God, it is, a, it is against you and you only that have done this great evil. Remember, say what he talk. He said, God, oh, now unto you and you only I God do this evil thing. But it wasn't God that he killed. But no. don't be God he killed. Oh. It wasn't God that he turned to a widow. No, no, no. Not be God he can't turn to a widow. But he was knowledgeable enough to know that whatever you do against any human being, you are doing it against his maker. He can't understand, say, what do you do to a human being? Now unto the person where creates him, in maker, now you do him unto. And so, if you will keep that one in focus, if you can't pull that one from front, make you they see, then you will understand that you just have to be a man of integrity if you want your relationship with God to remain good, harmonious, and of the type that God will be supporting you in whatsoever you do. You can't understand, say, you need to be man when get good character, integrity for God to support you for everything when you they do. Everything you do against any human being, you do it against God. Remember, say, anything when you can't do against any human being, now unto God, you they do unto Maybe I learned my own lesson the hard way. Maybe I can't learn my own for a very hard way. Probably because God loves me specially. And he taught me some lessons in a very, very hard way so that I can't forget easily. Maybe he can't teach me many lessons when I learn for hard way so that I don't go quick, quick, forget them. Probably the reason why many of us have problem with integrity. Maybe the reason why many of us not get integrity. Maybe God didn't deal with you the way he dealt with me. Now because maybe because God not can't deal with you the way he deal with me. Maybe I should share just one of such experiences. Maybe I, I can't tell you some of the story that made integrity such a matter of must for me. We can make integrity. Be something when I not go to play at all at all. One of the one of the joys I had, one of the great blessings I had had all the time since I became born again was that from my very early days as a born again Christian, I started hearing God. One better blessing when I can't get as a Christian, I can't hear the word of God when I just become a new Christian. He started talking to me. Intimately, God can't they talk to me like say he didn't hear me. I mean, I will be going to church on Sunday and he will tell me who will preach. Just imagine, I go to go church, God go can't tell me who go preach. What sermon is he going to preach? What text is he going to use? The topic when he go preach, even the Bible verse when he go preach. So by the time I get to church, I've already had the sermon. So before I can reach church, I'd already hear the message the money person won't preach. And I had a wonderful time in Lagos. You know, Lagos is a city of traffic jams. And I can't get, I can't enjoy my stay for Lagos. Because you know, say Lagos gets a hold up, go slow for every year. And God will tell me, you no, know, turn right here, turn left this way. This is the way to go. Don't go that way, and so on and so forth. I mean, little, little details like that. God go come tell me, say, make I go right this way, go left this way. God go come say, now this place you go go. Go say, no, go this place, so. Just like that. Small, small information. The day Moritala Mohammed was killed. The day when they come kill Moritala Mohammed. I was going to the University of Lagos where I was a lecturer then. I picked my bag and books to begin to go and God spoke to me and said, son, sit down. I couldn't go University of Lagos we are for the teach. I can't carry my bag, can't carry my book. I won't start to the go. God can't talk to me say, sit yeah. down, my pekin. I said, Lord, it is time, you know, if I don't go now, I'll be late for lectures. In fact, I was just asking him which route to take. I couldn't say, go do. 
You know, say, I, I need to go. If I not go now, I can't late for lectures, oh. In short, I just they ask him, Baba God, now which place I go follow? When he said, no, 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 you're not going to work today. When he can't tell me, say, you know they go work today. But I don't understand, Lord, when he said, turn on the radio. I can't say, God, oh, I don't understand. He can't say, make I own my radio. And suddenly I begin to hear my share music. At once, I can't even hear how many music they play. It wasn't long when the school in front of my house, when I saw the parents running here to ask her to come and pick their children. In order to say, the school went near my house, I couldn't see parents, they run, kitty, 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 don't carry their children. Then I knew something had happened. Then I can't know say something that happened. So while all my colleagues who went to the university panicked and were scampering back home, I was at home enjoying myself. When my co-workers went to the university, they rock kitty kitty, they come out. At their house, they enjoy myself. Then I made a mistake. At once, so I can't make one mistake. See, at that time, I was a university lecturer. That time, oh, I did teach for university. I was the most educated person in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And I make all no book pass for the Redeemed Christian Church of God. So I was the uh, interpreter for the general superintendent. Now me come the interpret for the general superintendent. And all the other pastors just left me alone, you know, interpreter for Papa. And all the ministers of God, they can't give me chance because now me they interpret for Baba. And of course, I I enjoy that. And of course, me I like that one well, well. But then one day, one pastor came early in the morning and said, "I'm preaching today, and you'll be interpreting for me." And one morning, one pastor can come. He can say, "I the preach you, you go, now you go interpret for me." Ah, I was offended. Who does he think he is? I can't do this. I said, who oh, this one to say be? Asking me, the interpreter of the general superintendent, to interpret for him? You they ask me, when be the interpreter of the general superintendent to come interpret for you? I didn't say a word. I'm not talking my side though. Understand? This was going on in me. You understand? I inside my mind that they talk him. I interpreted for him quite all right. Although I can't interpret for him. But if he could have seen what was going on in me, <laughs> he would have chosen another interpreter. But if he see what did they go inside my mind, if I can't take another interpreter. And then as soon as we finished the service and I entered into my car to begin to drive home, God spoke to me. And when we can't finish the service, I can't go, go enter my car. I won't start to go. God can't talk to me. I said, I see. So you are now too big to interpret for my servant. He can't talk, say, eh, uh-huh. So you don't too big to come interpret for my servant. And that was it. That was the last time I heard from him. That can't be the last time when I can hear from God. And I'm telling you, it's better never to have heard from God than to have been hearing from him and not to hear from him anymore. I they tell you, it did better make you not hear from God, though. Make you come to hear from man, and you can't stop to the hear from man. It's better to die. It better make you die. I'm telling you the plain truth. I they tell you the truth. In those days, when I didn't hear from him, I mean, Satan gave me a tough time. Those times when I know they hear from man, Satan can't deal with me well, well. He made sure that I entered into every traffic jam. In Lagos. He come make sure, say, every God's law when they Lagos, I enter inside them. And I'm telling you, brethren, I wept. I cried. I prayed. I fasted. I did everything. And they tell you, my people, I can't cry. I cry. I can't pray. I can't fast. I can't do everything when I sabi. Until finally, out of desperation, I said to God, forgive me this once. Until, oh, I can't verse, I can't tell God, say, just forgive me for only this one. And then if I'm going to offend you tomorrow, take me away today. If I will come make you verse tomorrow, kill me today. After that, I started hearing from him again. After that one, I can't hear from God again. 
Why should God be so angry with me? Wasn't the one I said I wasn't going to interpret for? Why God can't the verse for me? Not be him, I say I'm not going to interpret for. But everything you do against any human being, the account is to God. Now, because anything when you do against any human being, now unto God that you do unto. I, I just want you to hold on to that because that's the basis for integrity. I won't make on our other one for one hand because now it be the foundation of integrity. So, if I pretend to love you and then speak ill against you behind your back, if I can't say I like you. And I can't talk bad, bad work against you for your back. Because a man who lacks integrity will do that. Because a person will not get integrity, he go feel do that. In your presence, he will smile. Hello, bro. Hello, sis. For your front, oh, he go laugh. Hello, my brother. Hello, my sister. And then behind you, he will tear you apart. And for back, oh, he will come and judge you. Just remember that it is written. Matthew 12, 36 to 37. Make on our remember, say in the right term, for Matthew chapter 12, 35 to 37. Matthew 12, verse 36 to 37. Say, every idle word that a man shall speak, he shall give an account on the day of judgment. Make you now remember, say the right term, for Matthew chapter 5, verse 36 to 37. Matthew 5, 36 to 37. Any word when man go talk for, for corner, that man go give account. You can't report himself for the day of judgment. So if you sit down to discuss another brother behind his back, if you can't sit down, the talk of one brother for a back. Particularly a brother you pretend to love. Especially the brother when you de deceive people say you like. When you see him, you smile, you hug, you... When you can't see him, you can't laugh, you can't embrace him. And behind, you tear him apart, that means you lack integrity. And for back, you de judge him, they judge bad in a against him. It means say you not get integrity at all. And you will give an account, not to that brother, but to God. And you go give account, not be unto man, no, but now unto God. If I promise to attend your meeting and I fail to come. If I can't promise, say I go come on a meeting. I can't fail on that and not come. It is not to you I will give an account. It is to God. Not be on I go come report to, now God I go report to. Particularly if I know when I was promising you that I will come, that I wouldn't come anyway. Especially when I know say when I they promise you, I say I go come, say I no go, I no go feel come. Because once in a while, you know, I could say I will come, and then maybe as I was getting ready to come, there is an emergency that is so big that there is no way I can dodge it. Because sometimes, bo, I feel tell you say I they come. Maybe when I they ready to come, I can't see something way big, way way when I need to attend to. When go make me not feel calm. Of course, what a man of integrity will do is that immediately he will make arrangement for a substitute. Man, when can get integrity, what he go do? He go arrange for another person when go go represent him. Someone who will come and say circumstances beyond control, and it has to be beyond control, has kept my brother from coming, and I'm here. To represent him. That's the way we can't tell people when they invite that man of God. Say something went big past this man. It must be something went big past this man. It don't keep the person who I invite make enough he come. And me, I don't come make I can't represent him. The man who will pick someone, I impromptu you to say go and represent me, must have prepared to come. Person when just now, just now, can't pick person make he go represent him. Him himself, he already prepared to come before. So the man who is coming to represent you, you just hand over your nose to him. So person, when you they send, they can't represent you. What do you go do? Your notes, when you don't prepare, you just give him. I said, study this as you go on the way. You all say, make you read this one, though. Make you read that well, well, as you they go. Tell them, look, this is my writing. I have prepared to come. But 
circumstances beyond control has kept me from coming. You go tell and say, this is not my writing, no. Um, but something went big past me. That make me not feel calm. That is a man of integrity. That now that they call a man of integrity. If anybody says come, and you know you won't be able to come, tell the fellow plainly, I am sorry. I won't be able to come. If anybody call you, make you come, and you not say you not go feel calm, make you tell the person no. Oh, Face to face, say, I no go feel calm. Now, I know there are some people who won't take no for an answer. I know say they still get some people when no go, no go, when no go take no for your answer. You tell them the truth, I won't be able to come. You tell them the first time, say, I no go feel calm. Oh. They say, ah, no, 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 at all costs, you must come. No matter what it costs you, make you try come. I say, I won't be able to come. No, 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 you just must go and pray about it. You can't tell them the second time, say, I no go feel calm. Oh. They say, no, 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 make you just go pray about it. Oh. Well, after you've told him two times, you can't come. After you can't tell him two times, say, you no go come. And he still say, what, whatever, whether you like it or not, you, you must come, say, you can then go ahead and say, I am coming. And at that time, you have no problem at all. And you come and see, they tell you, say, whether you like them or not, you must come. You feel go tell and say, well, and they come. At that time, you know, say you don't get problem at all. Because when God told Balaam, don't go, first time, don't go, second time, and he says, God, should I go? God said, go. Because when God tell Balaam, say, first time, not go, not go, second time. You come ask God the third time, go, make I go. God say, oh yeah, go now. But if I promise you that I will come. But if I promise you, sir, they come. Solemn promise. Real promise, sir, they come. Sir, how many photographs do you want to take? Sir, how many photographs you want to take? Ah, we're talking about integrity. You are taking pictures. <laughs> we're talking about integrity. You, want, you take pictures. <laughs> God bless you, sir. God bless you, brother. I think he's taking his picture with integrity. I believe say they take a picture with integrity. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I promise you that I will come and I do not come. If I promise you, sir, I will come and I will not come. Just remember Psalm 15. Just remember Psalm 15. Verses 1 and 4. Verse 1. And four. Psalm 15 verses 1 and 4. Psalm 15 verses 1 and 4. Ask the question, who, who are those people who can dwell? He said, who be that person who go there? With our holy God. We stay with holy God. He said, someone who promises to his own heart. He said, a person who promise and it is pain him. And changes not. He not change him. In other words, he makes a promise. He make a promise. And he then discover, ah. And he can't say, hey. This promise is going to be difficult to keep, but I have promised. This promise will go ask me to keep, but better not promise. And he still goes ahead and keeps that promise. They are the kind of people who can dwell with God. And he can still go ahead. He can still come, he can fulfill the promise. Now this person will still stay with God. Let me tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you one thing. If you are a man of integrity of that nature, that when you promise, you don't break your promise. If you're a man of integrity of that nation, and when you promise, you don't break them. God will use that to rescue you from a lot of trouble. God will use that to rescue you from, from many trouble. I'll give you an example quickly. I will give you an example. Last year, I got a request from one of the presidents, one of the African presidents of states. Last year, I get one invitation for one African president. That I must come quickly to his country. He needed my attention immediately. It's make I come a country quick, quick. In fact, he sent a delegation of three people and told them they must sit down at the camp till I arrive. He sent three people come to redeem camp. Come meet me. Because they phoned and they told them I was out of the country. The people come phone the president, come tell the president, say, yes, when you send us, come meet you in all day around. It. Don't move until he comes. He said, make them sit down. Make them wait until I come. And then I came. When I can't come. And they said, sir, we've been waiting four days. And they already wait for four days. The president wants to see you. It is very, very urgent. 
He said, the president wants me. Make I come. Quick, quick. And I said, I am sorry. I can't tell them. Say, are they sorry? Oh? I have promised the University of Ibadan. I don't promise the University of Ibadan. That I will be with them. Say, the day one as me, I can't see your president too. On this particular day. I will be with the people of the University of Ibadan. There is no way I can go to your country. You know, I guess I'm going to feel dual when I can't go in our country. And return in time to keep my promise at you. And I feel can't come back. Can't see fulfill my promise for you. Oh, sir, you don't understand. Oh, okay, God, you don't understand, though. This is a matter of national importance. This thing is very important because of the whole country and I want you. The, the president says all we need to do is just phone. He will send his jet. The president tell us, say, what we just need to do now to just make a phone call to Ram. He goes send his airplane, can't carry you. And I say, I know. I can't tell them, say, I know. You are talking of a matter of national importance. I can't tell them, say, only they talk something when they important. I am talking of a matter of heavenly importance. Then me, I they talk something when they important to heaven. If I break my promise. If I can't break my promise. I will lose heaven. I will lose heaven. Whatever may be the problem your president is facing, if he can wait till Wednesday, I will come. Anything when they trouble the president, if the president feel wait till on Wednesday, I go come. Thank God I didn't go. I thank God, sir, I not go. <laughs> because it was just a week later that that president was chased out of power. Because after one week, they drive the president come up for seats. And who knows? Maybe I will have lost my head in the process. Who knows? Maybe they've all killed me for that process. <laughs> a, a man of integrity. And I'm sure if it were any other person. Would they talk about a man of integrity? And I know say if not any other person. Because there are promises, you know. Because many promises they <laughs> you don't go and visit the president like that and come back without uh, you know. You know, go feel, go visit presidents and still come back empty. <laughs> but if it is money that is going to block your way to heaven, may that money perish. If now money go come block your way, may you not know enter heaven, no. May the money make it destroy. I didn't hear you, amen. I know you hear you, amen. <laughs> I'm going to say one that we won't like too much. I won't talk one and not go like well, well, oh. That is part of integrity. A part of integrity. If I pretend to be holy and I'm committing adultery. If I can't talk, say are they holy and I can't commit adultery. I'm a holiness preacher. And on Sunday morning when I grab the microphone and I begin to preach holiness, everybody will be shaking. I'll be holiness preacher. Or Sunday when I come hold the microphone and I come they preach about holiness, everybody will come they fear, they shake. And yet, I have girlfriends among the choir. But I can't get girlfriends among the choir members. One or two among the uh, workers. One or two among the church workers. And who knows? Maybe one or two outside town. Who knows? Maybe one or two outside town. It is not to man. That I'm going to give an account. Not be unto man, I can't give report to. It is to God. Now unto God. Why? Why? First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three. Verse sixteen to seventeen. Sixteen to seventeen. First Corinthians three, verse sixteen to seventeen. First Corinthians three, sixteen to seventeen. It says if any man defile the temple of God. God say if anybody can spoil his temple. Him will God destroy. Him go destroy that person. And what's the temple of God? Now what if it's the temple of God? You or the lady you are defiling? Now you or that girl when you they, they mess around with. Or you and the brother that you are defiling because he goes both ways. You or that brother when be so now they fool on herself with. Because now the two ways they go. And the Bible went on because the issue of adultery. The Bible can't go on. Concern this issue of someone when they sleep with boy or girl will not be husband or wife. Because I know that in some areas we don't want to talk about such things. We pretend as if the problem is not there. And not say for some areas we don't like to talk things like this. 
Will they pretend, say the problem is not there? But I happen to know that the problem is there. And I happen to know that it's there in, in a degree that is frightening. I can't know, say the problem is there. And the problem can't day can't day reach one level when they threaten person. I mean, because I had had an opportunity to discuss with one bishop. And we were discussing the, the issue of adultery. Because I can't get opportunity to come and talk with one bishop. And we can't they talk about this issue of adultery. And adultery now, someone they sleep with woman will not be wife or man will not be husband. And he was telling me he was trying to justify it from the Bible. And he could have tried to uh, prove, say, adultery they write from the Bible. Telling me that if God says that if I if my brother offends me 70 times, 7 times a day, I should forgive him. He said, because Bible say, if my brother offend me 70 times, 70 times for one day, he said, God say, make I forgive him. That same God should be willing to forgive me 70 times, 7 times a day. He said, that same God, though, he, he go there willing to forgive me if I commit adultery 70 times, 70 times a day. <sighs> I said, brother, are you telling me, sir? I can't ask and say, ah, my brother, you did tell me, say, if that if you commit adultery 70 times, seven times a day, you are asking God for forgiveness. Said, That's what I'm saying. I said, brother, you will split hell while open. You commit adultery 70 times, 70 times a day. You did ask God to forgive you. He said, yes, sir. I can't tell and say, you yourself, oh, now you go open hell fire. Because God says you defile his temple. He says he will not send an angel to execute your judgment. He said he will do it himself. Because God can't tell say if you can't spoil the temple, he said he not go send angel can't do the work. He said him himself not go come and deal with you. If any man defies the temple of God, him will God destroy. If anybody can't spoil that temple of God, of which will be, God say him himself, he will destroy that person. But that's, that's one of the biggest areas where ministers lack integrity. Now one big place so when we say many ministers, they don't get integrity at all. Again and again, I've had some very bitter situation to handle. Again no, and again, no, I don't get so case when I find difficult to handle. When girls have come and they say, sir, we are sorry. We've done this, but some girls go come, they'll say, eh, sir, we we they sorry, oh. we don't do this, we don't do that. When our pastor, the shepherd says, it doesn't matter. But when our pastor, our leader for our church, can't say, it no not matter. What are we going to do? Now, what do you want to make we do? Our Lord Bishop was telling us just some hours ago, he said, whatever we see in the congregation is a mirror. Our bishop just said, tell us just now, say, what do we see for our congregation? Now, mirror of the... Of the ministers. Pastor. Is he right? Is he right? I say, is he right? I say, is he right? I mean, you are supposed to be the teacher. You are not supposed to be the teach. You are the one that these people trust. Now, you they trust. They put their life as it were in your hand. They don't commit their life put for your hand. And then <laughs> you tell them that it doesn't matter. And you can't tell them, say it doesn't matter. That God understands. Say God understands. It is to God we will give an account. Now, unto God who will come give the report. In fact, Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs 6, uh, verse 32. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. Says, if any man commits adultery, he destroys his own soul. He can't tell say, if anybody goes to put best one of your wife or your husband, he said, now only him will destroy his soul. That's what the Bible says. Now, what did the Bible can't talk? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. It says, fornicators sin against their own bodies. He said, people, when they sleep with person, will not be a wife or a husband. No. He said, now his own body they sin against. 
I've spent this much time on the issue of fornication and adultery. I don't spend this many time. They teach us about person when they, they sleep with person will not be a wife or will not be a husband. Because, because the rate at which we are discovering AIDS among ministers. Because the way when they discover AIDS among ministers of God is frightening me. The thing they threaten me. You know, we have an organization within the Redeemed Christian Church of God. You know, so we get some people like that among the Redeemed Christian Church of God that looks after AIDS victims. When they take care of people when they get AIDS. So if you know any, ask them to contact us. Thank God, God has been doing some marvelous works. If you know anybody, oh, I beg, tell them somebody to come meet us. So oh. we thank God, say God, that they do big, big work through that people. But we need to be warned. A good man will take care. That's one area where many, many, many ministers lack integrity. This is not a place where we say many ministers of God, many pastors, they don't get integrity at all. And, and all over the world, wherever I go, anywhere I go, all around the world. I've been confronted again and again and again by people complaining. Many people don't come meet me. Not be once, not be two times, not be three times. Then they complain. Of great men, great men of God, particularly from this nation. About great men of God, especially from this our nation. Coming to do all kind of rubbish abroad. When they come abroad, they can't do nonsense. We have enough problems with drug pushers. Many of them are oh, not drug pushers. We have enough problems with 419. Some are oh, not 419. All those ones we can always excuse. We can say they are unbelievers. Many of them will go feed those. You go say, ah, all those are not unbelievers. What am I going to say? When they say, you say you are a man of God from Nigeria, yes? Oh. <laughs> what do I go talk? When I go ask me, say, you are not a pastor from Nigeria, I will come tell them yes. Bishop so and so put so and so in the family way. You can't tell me, say, Bishop so so and so, he don't give one girl, Bele. Bishop so and so try to rape so and so. Bishop so and so try to one rape so and so. It's difficult to defend. It they hard, make person feel defend that one. No. That's why I am spending some time on that. I pray God will let you understand. Let me make me spend more time about this uh, issue. I pray may God make us feel understand. Now, if I say I have forgiven you, if I say I don't forgive you, and yet I keep on hating you inwardly, but inside me I see they hate you. It is not to you now that I will give an account. Not be you I will call reports to. It is to God. Now unto God. Because a man of integrity, when he says the matter is over, you are forgiven. Because man when get integrity, when he say matter don't finish, so I don't forgive you. The quarrel is over. A man of integrity <laughs> means exactly what he says. Say the quarrel one will get, he don't do over. Man when gets integrity, it can't mean what he talk. But today there will be several people who will tell you the matter is over, but the matter is just beginning. But today we we'll get many people who will tell you say the matter don't finish you, but the matter just the begin. Mm, now. Proverbs 11 verse 7. Proverbs 11 verse 7. Proverbs 11 verse 7. Proverbs 11 verse 7. It says, a merciful man doeth good to his own soul. It says, person when he gets mercy, now himself he did one too. But a wicked man troubleth his own flesh. He said, but person when they are wicked, now his own flesh he did trouble. So if somebody says, the matter is settled. And he keeps on hating you. Don't worry yourself. You keep on enjoying. If someone can't tell you, say, the matter does set you. And he can't hate you. Make you not worry yourself. Just say, enjoy yourself. He will be troubling his own flesh. Because now your own self, he did do. And he will have God to account to. And he go get God. May he go give reports to. What if I steal church money? And I falsify the record. What of if I can't carry church money and I can't give the lie record? Because I told you that if you're a man of integrity, there will be no false records. Because I don't tell you, say, if you be man when get integrity, you no why your record, no lie lie record. <laughs> and many of you know, you know how many records you have signed that you know is not anywhere near correct. Many of you now. When I know how many records you not sign, when you know say you not reach, you not even there near what is they correct. You no, know, the general vice is in Nevada, and you are in uh, 
Ogbomosho. You know the general vice a day Ibadan. And you can do Ogbomosho. And uh, returns at the end of the month. You want to send it in. And you know, they give return every end of the month. And uh, you justify stealing by saying, "He that works at the altar." Must eat at the altar. And you can't prove say stealing they good. Say that's when they work for altar. You go eat for the altar. You better eat what God gives you, or else we eat poison. Make you eat what God give you, or else so now poison you go eat. I've told, I've all, my people know in the redeemed Christian Church of God. I've told them again and again. My people for redeemed Christian Church of God, they know. I don't tell them again and again. If you eat what God has not given you, you have eaten some paper. It won't digest. I tell them, say, if you eat what God not give you, now some paper you they eat. I don't tell them, say, not go digest to. No, 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 it won't. You not go digest at all. Sooner or later, you will vomit it. If not be now, later you go vomit them. But by the time you are vomiting it, you'll be stooling blood. By the time you they vomit them, you also the shit is blood. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. That's why I told you that maybe I'm not the one qualified to give this talk. Oh. I better go. I sorry. Now oh. make I tell you now before say I'm not qualified to come talk this one. <laughs> but uh, I will try my best. But I will try my best. If you ever allow your hands to sign a report that you know is not accurate. If you go allow your hand to sign one report and you know say not they correct. How can you expect that you will lay that hands on the lame and the lame will walk? Are you going to say you can't put that hand on top of a person when you know the feel the worker and the person who can't feel the worker? And do you think that the same hands that wrote a false report to your leader? Why you to say and when you say right, why your report go give your leader? <laughs> that you will lay it on the head of a blind and the eyes will pop open. And you to say you can't put up a person when they see and the person's eye will come open you they see. How do you think you will be able to stand because you <laughs> Why you to say your feet stand? Your guy will look at the report and say, this is the report for the month? Because your guy can't look the report and you can't ask you say, this is the report for this month. As soon as he asks you the question. As he asks you that question. If it is not the correct report, you better say, um, just a moment, sir. I think uh, there are corrections to be made. If not be the correct report, you better tell and say, Oga, ah, wait so if let's like, say I get some more correction, make I make. The moment you say yes, sir. The moment you can say yes, sir. <laughs> How can you say yes, sir, with that voice? <laughs> Are you feel to say you feel say yes, sir, with that voice? And then go around. And command demons to come out. And you can't go. When it go to command demons when they come out. We'll look at you and say, Jesus, we know. And they can't look you, they can't say, Jesus, we know. Adeboye, we know also. They say, Adeboye, we know also. <laughs> but who are you? But who you can't be? Jeremiah 17, verse 11. Jeremiah 17, verse 11. Jeremiah 17, verse 11. Jeremiah 17, verse 11. We'll say, as a partridge, seated on an egg. You can't say, as a bear when they call partridge, can't cover egg. And hatch it. It not. And you're not going to ask him. So is somebody who acquires wealth, but not by rightful means. So now, especially when we say, come gather wealth, and you not follow genuine way, gather him. Will die in his youth. Say that person will die when he stay day young. And at the end will be a fool. He say at the end, though, that person a fool, like we call him. Many of us, because we see some people who seem to be prospering. Many of us, so because we see some people when we say they prosper. This fellow, we started ministry together, is now riding a Mercedes. I too must ride a Mercedes. And then you begin to tamper with church funds. This person, now we all of us now start church together. But look at him, you know, they ride Mercedes. And you can't start to touch church money, the sugar for church money. Don't be a fool. It's an advice, though. I hope you know. Let you not be a fool, though. Now, I advise her, the advice, so I know so now I know. I mean, when we were young, when somebody said, don't be a fool, we get angry. Because when we're small, my person tell us, say, they could not be a fool. We'll come the verse. We thought it's abusing us. We don't know it's advising us. We just say the person they cause us. We don't know say the person that advise, they advise us. What is the essence of collecting money that you will not be able to spend? Which important can do, say you will collect money when you're not going to feel spend? I remember years ago when Professor Ababa was a younger Christian. I remember many years when they all passed when Professor Ababa was a young Christian. Um, and you know, 
I, I think he, he, he was in a position to award contracts to some people, so he awarded contracts. He can't do one position when he go feel the award contracts they give people. He can award some contract, can't give some people. They executed the job. He paid them. They can't do the job, finish. He can't pay them. And then the man came with some big money. The man when he gives the job, can't come back with many money. And the man said, I'm a Christian now, I can't take that. And this professor can say, me, I don't be Christian, I'm not going to take that money. And he said, you didn't ask for it, we've brought it. He said, said not be you ask us, we'll bring them more. we we'll just bring them on our own. Oh, guy, at that time, all these cars were old. By that time, all the cars were they old. <laughs> oh, guy, you need a new car. He said, oh, guy, you need a new car. Oh. Say, how will I be able to ride in that car? He said, how me go comfy you ride for that car? Knowing that I didn't work for the money. When I know it's not be me work for the money. You know, there are many cars that have become coffins. Many cars, though, when be coffee, they are the very person. I've always said it again and again. When something untoward happened to a so-called man of God. I don't talk about many times. When something went not that good, go happen to a man of God. And people are beginning to ask God questions. I've always said one thing. Brethren, before you condemn God, remember you don't know all the story. And people call to ask God many, many questions. I don't tell them, say, before you start to condemn God, do, remember, say, you don't know all the story. He is a just God. Because God, not just God. He is. So if I make a false declaration of tithes. If I can't make lie, lie reports of my tithes. Of offerings. Of my offering. Of donations. Of my donations. Of attendance. Of people when come short. If I begin to write wrong things. If I can't write like light things. And I begin to sign them. And I can't sign them. I need to remember Proverbs 11 verse 1. A good make I remember Proverbs 11 verse 1. Proverbs 11 verse 1. Proverbs 11 verse 1. says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. The Bible tell us say by your balance so it's seen as something when be, when be abomination unto God. Anything that is false that you allow yourself to be involved in is an abomination to the Lord. Anything will be why you lie, lie, and you can't allow yourself, can't get involved for that one. It's an abomination. Years ago, when I became the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, many years when I can't be the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, we were contributing money to buy our first bus. We can't get a money to buy our first bus. We were very, very poor in those days. We did very poor for those days. Now remember that we needed 10,000 naira to buy a bus. 10,000 naira. I remember saying now only 10,000 naira we need more. We need to buy a bus. 10,000 naira. And as, at that great gathering of that day, we were about 300 that gathered. For that day, people went gather. Now 3,000 300. people. I asked for a hundred people that will give me a hundred naira each. I can't ask of hundred people to give me hundred hundred naira. Because hundred times hundred is ten thousand. Because hundred times hundred is ten thousand. And they began to come out. And they couldn't come out. When we got to seventy, there was nobody again. When we got to reach seventy, nobody can come again. Ah. So I began to plead, please. I can't beg him, I beg go. Oh. Please. <laughs> Finally, we got a hundred. At last, we can't get hundred people. Oh, when the number got to a hundred, every one of us burst into tears. When the number can reach hundred, all of us gonna cry. Ah, uh -huh. ten thousand naira. Ah, uh -huh. ten thousand naira. Glory be to God. So they gave me the money. Oh, glory be to God, though. They can't give me the money. And then we got to where we are going to buy the bus. We can't go here, we go buy the bus. And God intervened. And God can't do the work. And I think we got the bus that was quoted for 10,000 for 8,500. We get the bus when this was already priced for 10,000 for 8,500. I came back, called the people together. Glory be to God. We've got our boss. Everybody was rejoicing. I can't come back. I can't gather the people together. I can't say glory be to God, though. We don't buy our boss. And everybody can be happy. And I say we have a change. And I can't tell them, say we get change. Huh. Somebody said, who wants to know about the change? And one person can say, who wants to know about the change? We contributed for a boss. We have got 
the boss. We don't gather money more to buy boss who, and that boss will not buy him. Who wants to know about the change? I said God wants to know. Who wants to know about the change? And I, I tell them, say, God wants to know about the change. <laughs> God wants to know. See, I tell them, say, God wants to know. We got to change, brethren, 1,500 naira. What do you want me to do with the change? I can tell them, say, we change, remain, no, 1,500 naira. What do you now want me to do with the change? And then they say, ah. <laughs> It looks as if this is a man we can trust. You can't look me. You can't say, ah. You be like, say, we well, trust this one. No. <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. We'll talk that one later. Integrity. Integrity. Means everything. If you, if you collect money, collect an offering from the congregation, and you say you want to use it to build an auditorium. Because if you collect money from your people, from people when they come to your church, say you want to say build church. Don't use it to buy a car. Make you not use the money to go buy motor. Don't use part of it. Not come out small from the money. To entertain your guests. And say God's money for God's work. Take on entertain people when come visit you. And you can say God money for God's work. Integrity means what you say is what you mean. Integrity means say what you talk, now you mean. What you mean is what you say. And what you mean, now you they talk. Your yeah is yeah, and your nay, nay. Your yes now yes, and your no now no. I know some of you will say, but that is a difficult standard to meet. Well, I know say some of now will say that one hard, no, me, that one hard for us to, to reach. The standard of our God is very high. God's standard is they very high. And now, when this area of false declarations and false handling of, you know, church money and so on and so forth. This area of why you. Reports and why and why your way when you take when you take the undo church money. It's so important because of the very word used here to describe anyone involved in falsehood. Because the way they describe them, person when they say they do why when they do why they play they cheat others. It says anything anyone dealing with a false balance is an abomination to God. He said, anyone when they do wire, they do wire things, or they use wire, they cheat people. He said, that person is an abomination unto God. Years ago, I asked God, what is an abomination? Many years, when I passed, I couldn't ask God that word. What did you mean by the word abomination? And you know, God has a way of answering your questions in a very graphic manner. You know, he said, God, get the way when you the answer person question. In one time manner. And he says an abomination is something that will shock you so terribly that your skin will creep. He say abomination is something that will make you fear, that will make you shock, so that your body, your, your body will shake. I said thank you, Lord, but <laughs> I still don't know what is an abomination. I'm going to say, God, do I thank you, but I don't still understand what you mean by that word abomination. So he said, I'll give you an example. He said, I will give you an example. He said, you remember during the Civil War? I didn't know God was there at the Civil War. He said, you remember during the Civil War? When soldiers of the right will come to a village. He said, when soldiers of the right will come to a village. Some soldiers will come and say, you were helping our enemies. Some soldiers will come, come. You can say, ah, you, now you help our enemy. We will deal with you. We can't deal with you. And he said, on one such occasion, in an and tell to deal with these people, they found a, mo- a woman who was pregnant. He said, for one time now, they can't see, try to deal with those people when they say, they go judge them, they go give the enemy, they are, give them information. And when they wonder, they can't see one woman when we say, carry belly. And the soldier laid her flat. The, woman, the soldier can't see the woman lie down for ground. And dug out the baby out of her with the bayonet of a gun. They can't use gun heads. They knock the piki come out for the woman belly. Oh God, I, I shook and he said, that's an abomination. I mean myself, I can't shake you, I can't fear. He said, yeah, and that'd be abomination. I said, I understand. I can't say I understand. So some of the things that you say, you think you are doing, that you think don't matter, you know? Some of the things you they do when you say it don't matter. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. You go say, where the Spirit of God is, freedom, they will. <laughs> They make the skin of God creep. 
as it were. You can't make the king of God a guest must more crum crum. And there's something about that, about being an abomination to God, and you will find a secret hidden in Proverbs 22, verse 14. And something when be say when one can't be an abomination to God, and it, something won't be secret the inside. Proverbs 22, verse 14. For Proverbs 22, verse 14. The Bible says the mouth of strange women. The Bible can't tell say the mouth of strange woman is a horrible pit. You see now, now pit when 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 they want kind. They that be abhorred of the Lord shall fall into it. People when be sick, they not follow God way. God not they lead now they go go fall inside that pit. You know what that means? You know what that one means? When you begin to feel strongly tempted to commit adultery. When you come to get that urge, that mind, say you will commit adultery. It is most likely that you had already become an abomination to God. In, if it be say you yourself, it will be an abomination unto God. And God wants you now to do just one thing more so that your cup might be full so that he can finally finish you off. And God himself just want me you do one bad thing more so your cup will come full. So him, God, will finally fill you through it. God have mercy. God have mercy. It's a very serious topic. I hope that the Holy Spirit will help you bear it. The topic is very hard for me to talk. I pray may God, what I go talk, may Holy Spirit help you, may you feel understand them. Now, what is the basic reason for lack of integrity? What is the main thing when they make person not get integrity? Why is it that people find it so difficult to be men and women of integrity? Why people when they find them very difficult to be, when, when they not be man or woman when get integrity? The basic reason for lack of integrity is one word: pride. The main reason when person not, when they make person not get integrity, now only one word of you use to talk now pride. Pure and simple. Pure and it is simple. Why pride? So why pride now? Well, because a proud man has the desire to appear to be what he is not. A man when get pride, he won't come. Many people will see him. Say he be waiting, he not be waiting, he not be. He wants to give the people the impression that he has reached a goal that he hasn't even reached yet. He wants to people say he don't succeed for a particular place when he don't have fit succeed for that place. And he wants to impress people. And he won't make people ah, make people they impress. Say ah, that brother they try. This is only proud hearted people that want to impress. The only people when get pride, that want to impress people. Want to help, want, want make people. May they, they, uh, may they like and well, well. That's why when they say, oh, we had a crusade and 50,000 people were there. You, the only pride person will say, ah, we get crusade, we call all one crusade and have 50,000 people now come day. When only 5,000 came. When we say now only five people now come. It is just to impress. Now just to show people, show off. So that it will look big. So that people will look, so you will look big for people. I right? mean, <laughs> a brother was talking to me the other day. I said, Oh, I had a program in Nevada. One million people were there. One brother, they talked to me the other day and he come to say, I got all one program for Ibadan. And I one million people when I come. I said, Is that so? He said, Yes. I can't say that so. He said, Yes, so. Where did you hold the program? He said, Liberty Stadium. I can't ask her, where you for all the program? You can't say Liberty Stadium. I said, how many people were outside the stadium? He said, no, no, but if you see the inside, every seat was taken. I can't say, how many people can't they outside the stadium? He said, no, make you not worry about people when they're outside. What if you can't see inside? Every seat, person sits inside. I said, I have heard an Holy Ghost night there, sir. I can't tell her, I said, me myself, I don't owe Holy Ghost night for that place. So. <laughs> inside was full. Outside was full. People were sitting on the streets outside. And my usher has told me that the population of all those who came were just a little over 150,000. I can tell and say, inside full, outside full. People can't even they sit for us for street for outside. And my usher can tell me, say, people won't come. They just a little above 150,000. Ah, then your usher don't know how to count. You can say, ha, ha. Your usher, they don't know how to count. <laughs> They've told me now, though, that it is only pastors who can't heads. Tell me now, say now only pastors that they can't heads. 
that evangelists can't finger. You say evangelists themselves, them now only the finger that they can't. <laughs> <laughs> God have mercy on evangelists. God will get mercy for evangelists. <laughs> some pastors seem to count fingers too. Some pastors say they don't they count fingers. The idea is just to impress. The main thing is just to show people, show off. To appear that you are bigger than what you are. Just to show people, say, I'm big past what I be. But it's not necessary. You know, you know, call for you know the important. It's not necessary at all. You know the important at all. Zechariah chapter four verse ten. Zechariah four verse ten. Zechariah four verse ten. Zechariah four verse ten. You don't have to despise the day of small beginnings. Make you know, uh, make a year of the day when you say you day small. Everything, everything that is of God, automatically started small. Because everything, when day of God started small. If it is of God. If not God. You know it is within the power of the almighty God to drop the Lord Jesus Christ on the surface of the earth as a full grown 30 year old man. You know say it is possible for God to just put Jesus Christ inside his head as a big man. God could have done it. God feed to him. With him all things are possible. Because with God everything is possible. But he said no 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 he had to go into the womb of a woman come out as a little child. Like God said no this savior he need to go inside a woman belly you can come out as a savior. I would love to <laughs> when I get to heaven it's one of the things I think I will discuss with the Lord. I would love to love to, I would love for him to show me a video of when he was crawling. Come reach heaven. One thing there when I want to discuss with Lord Jesus. I go want make it come show me video when he they creep. I would love to see whether he suffered some cold, whether he had mucus in his nose. I go like to want to see him more whether he cold catch him, whether he can't get catar for nose. I wouldn't be surprised. I not go there surprised at all. Because that's the will of God. Because that's not God way. Now many of us want to fly without learning to crawl. Many of us won't fly. With that, we know they le- we don't want to learn how to creep. <laughs> That's not the way God does his things. That be the way God they do his things. So Pastor Obed will tell you that when we were building the first auditorium, Pastor Obed will tell you when would they build the first auditorium? Oh, there is something there. It was one fifty feet by three hundred feet. Our first church for the camp. The size of the auditorium of the church. Now, 150 feet by 300 feet. And uh, no, of course, we thought that that was the biggest thing in the whole world. That time, we can't to say that ain't big pass for the whole world. It was little by little that it expanded. Now, small, small, we can't expand. And then became too small and we brought, we came here. We can't, the place can't be tight us. We can't move, can't this place. And God is still expanding because. God is still expand us too. Because he said in his word, he can't talk in his word in Job chapter 8, verse 7. For Job chapter 8, verse 7. Job 8, verse 7. He said, Job 8, verse 7. Do your beginnings be small? When you start, they're very small. Your end shall be what? Very great. He said, Your ending, no, it will come day big, where, where? Exceedingly great. He said, Go day very big. He said, the Lord himself said it in Luke chapter 12. Lord Jesus, come talk him for Luke chapter 12. Verse 32. Verse 32. Luke 12, verse 32. He said, Luke 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flock. He said, make you not fear, oh, small, small people. It is the pleasure of the Father to give you the kingdom. He said, because now God joy you to come give you this kingdom. The Father to a certain small, <laughs> that's no problem. Everybody started small. Because you they start small, not be any problem with that too. Because everybody starts small. If you start small and you remain a man or woman of integrity, God will lift you up. If you can start small and you can't be man or woman when you get integrity, God Himself now he go carry you up. That's what the Bible says in First Peter chapter five verse six. Now wait till the Bible can't talk for First Peter chapter five verse six. First Peter five verse six is First Peter chapter five verse six. Make said, humble yourself. It's me you carry yourself. Calm down. Under the mighty hand of God, He will exhort you in due time. Put some for the hand of God, and God will come carry you up for the real time. 
Everybody has his own time. Everybody gets his own time. Oh. God has a plan for your life. God can get plan for your life. His timetable, nobody can change it. God's timetable, nobody go fit change it. Except you. Now only you go fit change that timetable. If you allow him to take you one step after the other, you will reach the top. If you can't allow Jesus to take you the worker, you go comfy reach the top. But if you put yourself on top when he hasn't put you there, <laughs> you will crash. But when you can't put yourself on top, when Jesus no one put you for that place, you go fall down. Because the Bible made it clear in First Peter chapter five verse five. Because Bible talking for First Peter chapter five verse five. First Peter five verse five. First Peter chapter five verse five. He said, "God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble." He said, "God they push away the person when 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 they carry body, but person when he say put himself down, God they give him grace." Humble man has nothing to hide. Man, when we say put himself down, he not get anything to hide. He has no reason to tell lies. He not get any reason why you can't talk like lie. He has no reason to exaggerate. He not get any reason why we say go they talk like lie. What the painter here better than there? <laughs> I mean, um, one pressman was interviewing us in London, and he said, uh, "One man when they work for radio, they work for all this uh, TV and radio. Can they interview us for London?" I learned that at your Holy Ghost Festival, fifty million people came. I he can't to say, "Ah, ah, yes, say for your Holy Ghost Festival." Now, fifty million people they come. Yeah, no, sir, fifty million. That's half of Nigeria. I can't tell her, no, sir. I say, if now 50 million, ah, then not half of Nigeria. Where will I put them? We are going to put them. And he looked at me and said one thing. He can't look me, can't talk one thing. That is which, which we should learn a lesson from. What will be as lesson to us? He said, you are the first African. He said, now you be the first man from Africa who had reduced the number that we suggested to him. We can't take the number, go down. What we give you, what we suggest to you. You're the first African I have met. I said 50 million. You said I push it to you. First man from Africa, when I meet, I can't throw the word, give you, say, now 50 million, and you say no. And he said the other Africans would have said, oh, much more. If now other people from Africa, they go say, ah, we even plenty past that 5 million. So, so it was a trap. You know, she's in a trap to find out whether it's just one of them. To find out whether me now one of them. What do you want to lie about? What do you want to lie, lie about? What do you want to exaggerate about? What do you want to they turn the world upside down they talk about? It's not your job. It's not your work anyway. It's not be your job. It's not be your work anyway. If a me, if a hundred million come to church, it's not your church. It is his church. If 100 million can't come your church, not be your church, you. now God church be that. He's not going to share his glory with anyone. God not going to share his glory with you. So if the attendance is 50, say 50. If now 50 people come to the church, make you toss now 50 people. 50 is not a problem on the day of judgment. 50 people, not be a not be big problem for the time of judgment. 50 souls. 50 souls. <laughs> because you're going to stand you there. After you have given an account for your own life as a minister, then you're going to give an account for the life of the 50 people that pass through you. You're going to stand there. After you don't, you don't give record the way you spend your life, the 50 people will pass through you. You yourself will come give account of them. Because some of them are not likely to end up in heaven. Not every one of them will enter heaven. And you're going to be drilled one by one on them. And they will come discipline you. They will discipline you because of every one of them. I've always told my people. I don't tell my people, say. Don't ask me and say, how will God have time to go through all that with everyone? There is no night there. Which time God will come get, stay, they do all those many work. Oh, and I don't forget, night not day that, that place. <laughs> they don't count hours there. It's one continuous day. You know they count hours for that place. Now one long day. And so there's no hurry. So no need to hurry. No hurry at all. No need to hurry at all. So if you have 50 souls under you, that's 50 problems. So if you can get 50 souls under you, now 50 problems be that too. May God help you solve them. May God help you, make you feel sovereign. 
So that if you have 50 and you begin to exaggerate and you say there are 50,000. <laughs> if you can't get 50 and you can't they talk like license at 50,000. And in any case, if you say you have 50,000 when you have 5,000, remember it is only the 5,000 that will pay tight. If you say you get 50,000 and only 5,000 you get, make you not forget, so now only you have 5,000 people and I go pay tight. The 45 imaginary ones will just be wind. The other 45,000 people now breeze there. Be. Let's talk briefly about the joy of integrity. Let go go talk about the happiness when come they inside integrity. The joy of integrity. The happiness when they inside integrity. Integrity breeds trust. Integrity or you can't bring what they call trust. When people know that you are a man of integrity, they begin to trust you. When people know say you be a man when get integrity, people will come to trust you. And trust breeds influence. Trust, you can't bring influence. A man that can be trusted will have influence over people. They see when they trust, he go feel get influence. People go they listen when they talk. Because all those who trust you, you can influence them one way or the other. Because everybody when trust you, you feel you advise them and you go take for one way or the other. That's why whenever I need money, I just stand by my people. Now make when I need money, I go just stand in front of my people. And I tell them, brethren, this is a project that is ahead of us. This is how much we need. I go tell them, my brother, oh, now this month, so so money I need. God bless you. And I sit down. When I finish, I will tell them, God bless you. I will go sit down. Because they know that that money will be spent for the project that we have talked about. Because they no say the money, oh, when I talk, now the project, when I don't want to discuss, let me go spend them for. So I don't have to beg them. So I don't need to beg them. They know that if I need anything for myself, I won't tell them anyway. They no say, if Nami wants the thing, oh, I know I can't tell them. The Lord is my shepherd. God, not be my shepherd. I don't go want anything. I shall not want. The one who calls you is more than sufficient. The one who call you, he gets everything when you need. Oh, believe me honestly, it's more than sufficient. He get he did more than everything. He gets everything when you need. If you ask him for anything and he doesn't give it, it's because he knows you don't need it. If you can't ask him of anything and he not give you, it means say you don't need them. If he knows that what we're asking for is going to kill you, he won't give you. If he knows say what do they ask for? He go kill you. He not go give you. He's a good God. Now, good God. If you need something, even without asking him, he will give you. If you want something, without you not ask him, he go give you. Don't, don't let anybody deceive you that it's only after you pray that God begins to make provision for what you need. Make you not let anybody deceive you. Say now, only after you pray before you get answer. He has made the provision before you open your mouth to pray. God already make that provision. Don't make that thing available before you start to pray. You want me to tell you one or two stories? You want me to tell you one or two stories? Is it okay by you? Is it okay by you now? Hmm. I think it was my second year as general overseer. I believe, say now, my second year when I come be general overseer. And I went to my hometown. I can't go my hometown. And you know, my father's house that he built, you know, <laughs> long ago. My father asked when he built for many years ago. Was there? He did there. And uh, <laughs> he didn't contain us then, so how can he contain us now? That time, enough he contain us. Talk less of now, he no go fit contain us. And so when I was there at home, one wealthy man in the village who was making blocks for say he came to me and said when i come to the village one man when be say he rich well well and the business when they do now block in a mode block they sell me and said ah you know general said, suppose friends follow you home where would they stay the man can't come can't tell me say now when you don't be general of us here if people can't follow you come home where they will come stay I said, I have no money to build a house. Ah, I said, building a house is not that costly. I can't tell and say, I will not get money to build any house. He said, to build a house, oh, it's not there at all. You have land. It's your father's land. You don't have to buy land. He said, you get land. Now your papa land. You're not going to need to buy land again. I will supply the blocks. 
anyway and you you know you can pay me any time he said me oh, i go supply you blocks and any time when you get money make you come pay to cut a long story short it got me into getting blocks i built the house as soon as we roofed it he can't encourage me make i get the blocks i can't get the blocks i can't build the house immediately i can't roof the house I was sitting down here at the camp. I couldn't sit for camp. We were still very, very small there. When the message came and he said, I want my money. We did very, very small that time. He can't send more message come, say he wants his money now. <laughs> and I put my head on my desk in my little office and I said, Oh God, you know, <laughs> I have never attempted anything too big for me. I can't put my head down for the, my table. I can't say, Oh God, you know, say... I know what try anything when Jay Big passed me. I didn't ask for a house. I know ask for house. And this man lured me into it. Lord, forgive me. This man can't deceive me. Make a build house. God forgive me. Oh. For being stupid enough to. But please just help me out of this. For me to become fool. Oh God, please just help me come up from this wala. And I had an all night vigil. So after that one, my, with my head still on my desk, while I was still praying, I fell asleep. Before then, no, now all night we just close. As I they pray, sleep can't catch me. I know you don't fall asleep while praying. I know so many of them, I know they sleep on and they pray. <laughs> you are a great man of God. Oh, no, no, a powerful man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's only a small boy like me that can still fall asleep when they are praying. Now only small people, small picking like me, go feel fall asleep when they pray. <laughs> it happened to us in a while. It happened for us once, once. Anyway, I woke up. I can't wake up after some time. I seen I was. I saw that I was still praying. After some time, when I even see how they pray, when I don't sleep. And the man came and said, and I was alone at the camp then, in those days, you know. I did alone for the camp. The camp was just for gathering, for convention. Because they, we just they gather for the camp, for convention. And the man said, I'm, I'm looking for the leader of this place. One man can't come. He said, they look for the leader of this place. I said, the leader of this place is God. He said, I know. He said, but I'm looking for the human leader. I can't tell and say the leader when they did, of this place to so, nah, God. He said, I know. Now the human leader, let me they look for. I've not seen him before. i never seen him before. I said, I said, well, yes, I am the one. I can't tell and say, well, now me be the person. He said, are you sure? I said, well, I am, sir. He said, you there sure? I said, not me. <laughs> There's nobody I say anyway, so you can't check. But I am. After all, nobody did when we say you feel ants, not me. He said, God sent me to go to this camp, describe the place to me. I said, I should go and give the leader of this camp this morning. I came from the north. He said, God send them. Make it come this camp. He described the place to Ram. He can't tell me, make I give the leader of this camp this morning. He said, I come from north. I prayed for him. He left. I can't pray for him. He can't go. I didn't open the envelope in his presence so that he won't see my excitement. I don't open the envelope when he give me here around you because I don't want to make him see us as they happy. When I opened the envelope inside, it was 3,000 naira. When I can't open the envelope when he give me, that 3,000 naira, the inside. Brand new notes. New notes of 3,000 naira. Now the inside. The exact amount that I owed that man. The very money when I owed the man. Now, this man had been on his journey before I prayed. You know, say this man, he just start his journey to come meet me before I, even, before I start to pray. That's the point I want to make. Now that thing I want to tell you now. The one who called you, he, uh, he has finished all that you needed. The one who called you, he don't finish everything when you need before he called you at all. Before he can't call you at all. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. When you are a man of integrity, people trust you. When you can't be man, when you get integrity, people will trust you. The people who trust you, you will influence them. People 
But when you when you trust you, if he advise them for something, they go take. And then influence we give back to followership. And this word, when they call influence, you can't give the king to which they call followership. And followership will give back to growth. And this fall people when go come they follow you, you can't make you can't get many people when go join, they follow you. The reason why many churches are not growing is because the people in charge are not men of integrity. The reason why many churches now they grow now because people when they're in charge, they feel be people will not get integrity. People come, they spend a month or two, they look at your lifestyle, and they say, No, 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 no. People go come to church, they'll come look. They'll spend one month or two. They'll come look say, mm, no, 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 no. If I want to give money to God, I want the money to be used for God's work, not for anything else. So they move. If I want to give money for, to God, and I want me that money, me they use that for God's work. Not be for anything. They'll come work out, come out. And growth automatically leads to blessings. When that growth, you can't lead to, to blessings. Oh, yes. Growth will automatically lead blessings. Growth to, it will lead to blessings. So, integrity breeds trust. Trust breeds influence. So, integrity, you can't bring trust. Trust, so you can't bring influence. Influence breeds followership. Influence, you can't bring followership. Followership builds, breeds growth. Followership will bring growth. And growth breeds blessings. And growth, so you bring blessings. Before I give you Bible passages to support this, let me quickly tell you the story of a young boy before I forget. If I give you Bible passage, make us support this one. I won't tell you a story about a young boy. He, he was, you know, one of those boys that w- w- we grew together as a Christian in the early 70s. Now, one of those boys, so when we grew together for early 70s. And he was an account clerk in his place of work. This boy, now I, uh, now, person when we say they take record for the place when they work. And then his boss called him and gave him 10 shillings in those days. And he bought, he or guy can call and one day, can't give him 10 shillings for those days. To go and take a taxi from a Butemeta to a papa to go and deliver a message. To so go take taxi from a papa so a butter meta may go deliver one particular message. And the boy took a bus. And the boy can't enter bus. Because he didn't see a taxi on time. Because he waits tired enough to see taxi. And went and came back and spent only one shilling. He can't go, come back. Now only one shilling, now he can't spend. So he went back to his boss and said, I've gone, I've returned. I went by bus. Here's your change. He can't go meet Ioga. He can't tell and say, I don't go, I don't come back. This now your change. Everybody in the office laughed at him. Everybody went there, the office gone, they laugh at him. Hey, you without of poverty. He said, now, poverty go kill you. Yes, you. Oh, <laughs> fanatic. They can't tell and say, no, no. This and that. Boy said, the money was given for transport. The boy can't tell and say, the money, oh, now for transport they give him. Right? Not be so. I have gone. I've returned. I don't go. I don't come back. Oga, your change. Oga, take your change. Even the Oga took the money from him and said, well, <laughs> something must be wrong with you. Even the Oga, when he gives the money, take the money from him. I can't say, if I say something wrong with this speaking, no. But, some months later, but after, men, after some months, the, 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 the work expanded and the boss wanted to go and start a branch. Of his business in Ilori. And they are work on big where well, where well. the company come big where well, where well. and the organ won't go ex- won't go open one new branch for Ilori. And he sat down at night and he was thinking, who is the fellow that is trustworthy that I can send to Ilori? He can't sit down for night, they think who I go feel send may go Ilori. Because Ilori is far from Lagos. Because Ilori far from Lagos. I need someone I can trust. And all of a sudden he remembered. He said, I need person I go feel trust to. At once he can't remember. The boy who could return nine shillings out of ten. The boy will go feel return nine shillings out of ten shillings. That for, that fellow can be trusted. From accounts clerk, he became manager overnight. He said that person, the feel trust them. From person when they take record, they can't make them. Oga for the other company overnight. Because 
is someone who could be trusted. Because a person when they go feel trust. Say fellow of integrity. Now a person when get integrity. Genesis seventeen verse one. Genesis seventeen verse one. Genesis seventeen verse one. Genesis seventeen verse one. God said unto Abraham, Walk thou before me and be thou perfect. God can't tell Abraham, walk out, follow me, oh, make you come perfect. I am Jehovah El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. He said, now me be Jehovah El Shaddai. He said, the God went big past everything when you get. What God was saying to Abraham there is, listen. What did God tell Abraham? He said, listen. I am more than sufficient for all your needs. You be a man of integrity. He said, I big past everything when you want. He said, what I just want from you? Be a, may you be man when get integrity. By the time you get to Genesis 18 now. When you can't reach Genesis 18. Verse 17 to 19. Genesis 18 verse 17 to 19. 17 and 19. Genesis 18 verse 17 to 19. We find God now. Haven't found Abraham to be a man of integrity. Say, can I hide, hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? After God, all find out. Say, Abraham, now man of integrity. He can't say, I feel hide from Abraham. What I won't do? For I know him. He said, because I know him. Oh, how I wish God can say, I know you. I wish God go say, he know you. That's a great testimony. Then a better testimony. God said, I know him. I know what he can do. I trust him. God said, he know Abraham. He said, he know what Abraham go feel do. He said, trust Abraham. I trust him. No wonder that Abraham became a very great man. He said, he trust him. No wonder Abraham can't be man when we say he can't get money where he did. He can't be very great. And you know, because of the influence that Abraham had with God. Because of the, of the closeness where Abraham can't get with God. When God had to deal with Jacob, his wayward grandson. When God won't deal with Jacob, Jacob when we say they do Yaga Yaga, they do Jaguda. The influence Abraham had with God still reflected on God's dealing with Jacob. The closeness, the likeness, when Abraham gets with God, he can't make God, he can't take him easy when they deal with Jacob. If you read Genesis 28, from verse 10 to 13. If you read Genesis 28, verse 10 to 13. Genesis 28, verse 10 to 13. Genesis 28, verse 10 to 13. Where Jacob had that dream, you know, of the ladder that went to heaven. When Jacob can't dream, say he see long ladder when stretch go reach heaven. And God was speaking to him and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. And God can they talk to Ram. Now maybe the God of Abraham, your fa- your papa. He didn't say I'm the God of Abraham, thy grandfather. He not to say, Now maybe God of Abraham, your grandfather. He said that I am going to deal with you now because of Abraham who had an influence with me. Do I can't deal with you because of Abraham when we say he follow me, he like me. If you're a man of influence, a man of influence with God, a man of integrity, it's not only your children that will benefit, even your grandchildren will benefit also. If you be man, when get integrity, not be only your children go benefit them, even your grandchildren go still enjoy them. And uh, when you read Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. When you can read Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Proverbs 10, verse 22. The Bible says. Proverbs 10, 22. The Bible can't to say. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. Say, God bless you, know, if they make person they rich. And are there no sorrows. And he not going to bring sorrow come at all. So why don't we just wait for the blessings of the Lord? So why would not, why would not just wait for God's blessing? Instead of fooling around. It's all of us, they misbehave, they waka waka. You no, know, juggling figures and... They make and, wire with figures. And throwing integrity to the wind. I will come, they throw away integrity and put for a breeze. Just because of blessings that will not last. Be- just because of the blessings, one won't get, will not go last. The blessings of the Lord will make it rich. If God is going to prosper you, he will prosper you. The blessing, when God gives... It will make person the rich. If God won't prosper, you won't make you rich. He will make you rich. No, it takes God to cause some people to say, to come and say, take. You know, say, is it possible for God to make people, go tell people, may they can't give you, give you gifts? You can use gimmicks. 
you feel use why you all you like you can stand there and tell them stories and bamboozle them into giving you feel stand for your church can they tell them lie lie story so that they will give you money you can do it once twice after some time and they will see through after you don't deceive them you don't tell them lie lie after some time you don't go feel tell them that lie lie again that's why you find that there are some people some years ago who used to go about in some flowing agbada. In those days, it gets some people when they carry a big agbada they work out. Now, the agbada is no longer flowing. But now, after some time, you find that say, the agbada not even wide again. Because you can't deceive some of the people some of the time. You can't deceive all the people all the time. Because if you deceive some people for some time, but you don't go feel deceive everybody every time. No, 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 no. You remain straight. Remain a man of integrity. The Almighty God will just keep on promoting you step by step by step. If you can't be man when get integrity, God will come to promote you from one level to another level. At his own pace. For his own way. And the joy of it is that if it is God that is promoting you, you can only go higher. The good thing when come day inside, say, if not God, they promote you. You go only they go up, up. You can never come down. You not go come down. No matter how well it is with you today, if it is God that is promoting you, the best is yet to come. No matter how well you did, how rich you did today, if not God, they promote you. That one has small thing. You still pass this one, pass the one when you did. Conclusion. The end of the matter. Oh. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Matthew 5 8. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Say, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. Say, bless in day for person when get clean belly. For they shall see God. He said, because they go see God. One of the greatest blessings of being a man of integrity is that you have a guarantee that you will see God on the last day. One better thing work on day for man when get integrity. It means say that on the last day the person will see God. And Revelation twenty two verse fifteen. Revelation twenty two verse fifteen. Revelation twenty two verse fifteen says. Revelation chapter twenty two verse fifteen. Thus say without our dogs. He said for outside do not dogs. And those who love and make a lie. He said now those. When they say they love like lie and they tell and they talk like lie. In other words, men of integrity, <laughs> congratulations, you will see God one day. People when get integrity, I salute you now. One day, when I go see God. Those who are not of integrity, those who lies, those who say yea, nay, nay, yea, yea, nay, and we don't know what they are saying, the Bible says they will be out on that day. Those people when not get integrity, those people when they talk lie, those people when they talk, yes, no, no, yes. We're not going to even know, say, know what till they talk. The Bible said that outside they go day that day. Why do you want to be a servant of God if you are not going to make it to heaven? Why you won't be God's servant when you no one go heaven? Why? Why? If you ask any member of the Dean Christian Church of God to tell you what are the vision statements of the Dean Christian Church of God, they will tell you number one. To make it to heaven. When you go ask anybody when they go redeem Christian Church of God, he will come tell you the one of the things when they look for the redeemed Christian Church of God. Number one, now for them to make heaven. Then number two, to take as many people as possible with us. Then number two, make they come take many people when they feel carry follow body to heaven. To heaven. If anything is going to tamper with number one, we drop it. He said, if anything. Go come make them. Me they not they make heaven. He said I go throw it and down. Heaven is number one. Heaven no na number one. Why are you winning souls if you are not going to heaven? Why you come they why you come they tell people about Jesus Christ when you don't want make when you don't want go heaven? <laughs> it is only heaven that you are going to be rewarded. You know say now only heaven now they go come feel reward you. When we get to heaven, if we will be taught that. Our crown will be studded with stars. They can't teach us, say, for heaven, no, our crown won't go where. They go, they go come decorate her with many stars. And the stars will represent the number of souls that we have won. 
And these stars, when they are crowned, oh, now they, how many people would all come Christian, come make a, give their life to Christ? Now, them they represent. But if you win millions of souls and you don't make it to heaven, who is going to wear the crown? If you can't win millions of people, come uh, come Christ, and you not come go heaven, who will come wear the crown? When get those stars. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Make we put our head down. Make we come pray. Brethren, some of us, if we are going to be honest, we have some repenting to do. Many of us, so, if we are truthful to ourselves, we need to repent of many things. We need to go to the Almighty God and say, Father, forgive me. We need to go meet God and tell him, say, Baba, oh, forgive me. <laughs> I've offended you. My life had not been a life of integrity, but I promise you, Lord, from tonight I will change. I don't make you vessel. My life not be life when get integrity. Baba God, I promise you, say from now I go change. Ask him for forgiveness. Make you ask and make him forgive you. And if you have been clean in all that we have been saying, if you have been a man of integrity all the way, then well, just thank the Almighty God and if you now the person when be say get integrity, may you begin to the thank God. Give him glory and ask him to keep you on the straight and narrow path. And make you come tell and make you keep you. For that way went straight and went leads to heaven.